We're joined now by Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang, a former tech entrepreneur campaigning live from Iowa. We are 31 days now from those caucuses. And he's also been making headlines this week with the fundraising hall. Take a look at how Tulsi Gabbard, Cory Booker, members of Congress running for president, have brought in less than $10 million here in the last quarter, while Yang raising over $16 million, the same ballpark, many say, with candidates like Warren, Biden and Buttigieg. He's also making news today, taking on the president's strike on Iran, saying it highlights the need to get Trump out of office. We need better decision making in the White House that does not escalate violence. Uh, welcome back, Andrew Yang on the beat. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Ari. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you uh, and Happy New Year to the folks I see behind you, a campaign tradition. Uh, but we, of course, begin with a very serious uh, foreign policy standoff. Uh, you are critical of what the president did. What would you, as president, do different? Well, I never would have pulled out of the multilateral nuclear agreement with Iran that ended up causing all of these provocations that have now been escalating to a point where we're at the brink of war. We need to head the opposite di direction. The vast majority of Americans want nothing to do with a war in Iran, and I would lead us back from the brink and reinvest in diplomacy to try and get tensions under control in the region. What if that doesn't work? What if, uh, as, as the folks in this administration say, uh, and frankly, as, as many in the last administration said, although they did ultimately reach a, a kind of deal, uh, that Iran does sponsor terror, that it does sow discord in the region, and it does uh, work against U.S. interests, and that if that doesn't work, then what? Well, we've had a series of escalating provocations. We need to keep them in line, where if Iran does something problematic, we need to let them know that that's not something we'll accept, but you don't do something that's going to precipitate a larger scale armed conflict. We've been in a constant state of warfare for the last 19 years, Ari, and that's not the will of the American people. That's not the way it was drawn up in the Constitution. It's an act of Congress to declare war. That's where we need to head back as a country. I would repeal the AUMF and restore Congress's historical power to make these kinds of military decisions. How's it, Yangin' dudes? My name is Sean, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, Andrew Yang has responded yesterday to the Iran conflict. Um, I was avoiding covering this topic due to demonetization. You know, it is too many demonetized videos end up taking your channel and I don't want to do that so but screw it you know I'm against uh, self-censorship I'm not going to do that um, those of you who don't know about this shit need to know about this and I'm going to talk about it because I agree with Andrew Yang as I normally do right okay so uh, I'm gonna have to interject this here at the beginning of the video for, I forgot to say it if anybody you don't understand what just happened um, there was a a revolt and attack some sort of on our U.S. embassy. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it was in Iran or in Iraq or what's going on with that, but there was um, an attack on the embassy, and Trump accordingly uh, sent a bunch of Marines and helicopters and uh, like all kinds of different stuff, and, and we, we protected the embassy, right? I think that's what happened. And then as retaliation, Trump just drone striked the second in command of Iran, who was supposedly behind that. Now, there's a lot of... Uh, back and forth over where this guy is an asset to America, has been an asset to America, is currently. Is he a terrorist? Isn't he a terrorist? Is he the one behind a lot of the upheavals in Iran? And is the upheavals in Iran to switch regimes a good thing? Is it not? We know by really, I, I really don't understand that yet. So I'm kind of jumping the gun on making this video, but I want you guys to know uh, the facts more so than my opinions, right? So that's technically what happened. That's the context. And, uh, all right, I'm going back to that part of the video and, uh, you guys continue watching. <laughs> War with Iran is the last thing we need and is not the will of the American people. We should be acting to de-escalate tensions and protect our people in the region. I have signed a pledge to end the forever wars. We have been in a constant state of armed conflict for 19 years at a disastrous cost to both our people and our resources. This must end. Our constitution says that the power of Congress to declare war. I would repeal the AMUF Congress and the executive branch concerning military action. 
The priority now has to be protecting our embassies, bases, and personnel in the region and hardening our defenses. We must ensure that Americans do not pay a terrible price for this attack. This decision highlights the need to get Donald Trump out of office. We need better decision making in the White House that does not escalate violence, but instead invests in dis diplomacy to achieve our national interests. For his first tweet, this is what the American people think, by and large, overwhelming majority. The next tweet is just a fact. Uh, we have been in armed conflict for 19 years at a disastrous cost to both our people and our resources. Andrew Yang has signed a pledge to forever war for, to end forever wars. Now, Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders are the only candidates who are right on this issue. 100%. There is no nuance, really. There is technically a lot of nuance, you know what I mean? But where you should stand at on this issue, there really isn't any nuance. I'm a conservative person telling you this. I am not taking the conservative stance because it is literally designed to continue the military-industrial complex, the steamroll engine that is the Middle East for profits gained in the military-industrial complex, right? Our Constitution says that the power of Con that is the power of Congress to declare war. I would repeal the AMUF and restore the historical balance between Congress and the executive branch uh, concerning military action. Okay, the AMUF and other bills and stuff like that um, has made it to where the president can label somebody a terrorist. As long as you label them a terrorist, you can drone strike them. That's American citizens. That's anybody. That's anybody. Um, there's a 60-day... Um, in the in executive orders, you're allowed to have 60 days to do a military uh, action of some sort, right? Normally, th that's not used. It's only used if, on huge retaliation or something that you have to do. Um, people are saying that, that Trump went too far. Um, I understand that retaliation, it's a bold retaliation. It looks strong. I get that. But at the same time, people don't understand who Soleimani was and... The fact that he was actually the cause of all the upheaval in Iran. And if, if Iran is an upheaval and I'm um, going to, you know, turn on the Ayatollah and actually make it to where Iran, you know, isn't what it is today. And it's actually, there's a change of hands, you know what I mean? A, a revolution of some sort. They've, effect, uh, the Trump administration have effectively stopped that. They've 100% cemented the Ayatollah's rule and, um, cemented escalation in in the area when that guy was actually instrumental in helping fight isis stop i there's a lot of i don't want to sit here and and praise that guy because he's a horrible monstrous person who's done a lot a lot a lot of bad stuff um and there's no telling if he was the getting power or if he was the one 100 behind um you know the upheavals in iran there's no telling that he'd be better off than what it is you know what i'm saying so i'm not trying to say that but at the same time um, Trump has ticked the needle one way and we don't know if that way is good either. <laughs> you know what I mean? So continuing the priority now has to be protecting our embassies, bases and personnel in the region and hardening our defenses. We must ensure that Americans not pay a terrible price for this attack. This means that Yang is tough. Yang wants to be tough. Yang would be tough, but you can, you can be tough without having to, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I haven't 100% formed my opinion on this whole issue yet, um, but I tend to agree with Yang. So, uh, the last tweet was the decision highlights the need to get Donald Trump out of office because it was a it was a snap decision. There was no thinking about it. You know what I mean? There was, it was just ah man, it's so rough. But on a different note, Trump strike has drawn a sharp line between the Democrats running for president. Now, um, okay, so. Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang came out unequivocally against the attack that killed Iran's Qasim Soleimani. Okay. The Democratic presidential candidates have split into an anti-war camp led by Senator Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang and a set of more nuanced responses to the killing of key Iranian official. A rare and sharp contrast inside the party that begins to choose its nominee in a month because the Democratic Party is pro-war. MSNBC is pro-war. Uh... The right wing party is pro war. They're all members of the establishment. They're all for military industrial conflicts. They're all for the media industrial conflicts. They're all for uh, profits, gains in any certain way. And anybody who can pay their pocket, which is corporations, those bills will get passed. That's what's happening. And Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, and Bernie Sanders are the only ones who are correct 
on this we need to get out of the middle east now it's a cesspit we've only made it worse we haven't made it better we just need to let those people govern themselves and when they start knocking on our neighbor's door trying to do stuff then we you know we act accordingly but going in there and policing it is doing nothing but making it worse making it worse giving them a reason to hate us right so anyways all the Democrats, in varying degrees, criticized Don uh, President Donald Trump for the potential his drone strike has to destabilize the Middle East. But while Senator uh, Elizabeth Warren made the point of calling Kasim Slani a murderer, former Mayor Mike Bloomberg called him a murderer with the blood of Americans on his hands. And former Vice President Joe Biden began his statement denouncing Soleimani's crimes against American troops and thousands of innocents. Sanders took a different tone, one drawing from a wing of the party that has opposed Americans... Uh, wars since Vietnam. Trump's dangerous escalation brings us closer to another disastrous war in the Middle East that could cost countless lives and trillions of dollars. Senator said in a statement that noting his opposition to Iraq war and without mentioning Solomon by name, Trump promised to end endless wars, but this action puts us on the path to another one. The campaign's press statement referred to the attack as an assassination in the attempts on Friday morning. Uh, Warren also said Trump's assassinated a senior Iranian official. It's <sighs> oh my god Warren anyway, okay representative Tulsi Gabbard who has cast herself as the party's leading anti-war spoke about the strike in Fox uh, Fox and Friends uh, Friday morning calling it a very clear act of war by the president without any kind of authorization or declaration of war from Congress clearly violating the Constitution so make no mistake anybody who's saying this is a good thing is pro-war they want war um I don't think that, you know, World War Three was trending and all that kind of stuff. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, uh, you know, if anything happens, we would be going there. Iran would be coming here. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I haven't, I might give my updated opinion on it. I haven't really formed my thoughts, so I can't, you know, it'd be disingenuous of me to say hardlined one way or another what should or shouldn't be done or what my opinion is or isn't, right? So, anyways. Yang, like Sanders, immediately denounced the attack and later said he would, as president, restore the historical balance between Congress and executive branch concerning military action. Most Democratic elected officials running for president took more cautious, cautious and traditional stances, beginning with condemnations of Soleimani, who has directed Iranian proxy terror operations around the world for decades. So they all goes without saying. But uh, And who the U.S. blames for a recent attack on the embassy in Baghdad uh, by a military allied with Iran. They also warned that Trump could be making a mistake. They, they, they put that as an asterisk. You know what I mean? Like it's not. They're all pro-war because it all makes them money, and they don't want to seem pro-war because then the establishment won't push them. That's what's happening. Andrew Yang, Bernie Sanders, they don't care. They don't care. This is Warren, just a wolf in sheep's clothes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all. The rest of this is just what the other candidates say, um, <clears throat> and what they say is all just. War, 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 war. Uh, yeah, it's bad, 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 but still, we like war, war, war. You know, that's pretty much what they're saying. So, um, Yes, this is Andrew Yang's take on it. This video is probably going to be demonetized, so it is what it is. Appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, just want to step back on here and let you guys know about this. All right, I'm out.